live, check, check, testing, testing, one, two. Hello, everybody. Hopefully, we got a few people hanging out with us this morning. We are in week three of MoGraph Mentor, so we're going to be talking about some animation stuff today. I've got uh, my Photoshop timeline open. I'm looking at uh, everybody's animations, their ball bounce stuff. <clears throat> so many cool concepts, people taking a different uh, direction on it, playful stuff, straightforward stuff. Uh, seeing stuff in 3D, in 2D, seeing lots of different techniques. So that's a lot of fun. Uh, so I'm just going to hang out here for a minute and let people uh, get dialed in here. Say hello if you're hanging out so I know who we got. Um, as always, this is going to get recorded. So if you're not hanging out with us right now, that's OK. You can check this out later. And uh, yeah, how's everybody doing? Week three, here we go. <clears throat> I'm doing much better this week. I sound probably a little sick still, uh, but definitely feeling a heck of a lot better than a week ago. <clears throat> and let me know how the stream is doing, if we're getting a, getting a lag or a delay, or if you're not hearing me, good. We'll get all that stuff uh, dialed in before we get going here. See, I've got some messages I need to get back to today. So if you've reached out to me on a DM, I'll uh, get back to you after this live stream. So if you're hanging out, say hello. Let me know who we got here. <clears throat> and then we will uh, talk animation. I'm just going to get a few more examples queued up here. I was just digging on Cameron's here. Let me go ahead and bring his in as well. He did some cool stuff with the asteroids. And when I do, uh, oops, when I do critique on animation, I really like to use the Photoshop timeline. Oh, come on. Give me a new layer. So I can just draw right over the top. And normally what I like to do is just kind of lay out a spacing chart so we can get a visual. And you see I've got a couple, uh, couple of people skewed up here. Hello, Anya. Hello, how are you? How are we doing in week three, Anya? Let's see, Jenna. So I'm just going to, in real time here, take a look. Okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty nice right there. Let's go ahead and look at Jenna's a little closer too. Let's see how many, let's see how many scenes I can bring into Photoshop before it absolutely craps out on me. Let's see, Catherine, Catherine went full Bowser <laughs> Nintendo. Okay, we gotta pull that one in too. That's fucking awesome. Pixel aspect ratio, fine, fine. Let's see. I just like to give myself a little layer on top here. Glad to hear it, Anya. Anya's doing great. Love to hear it. Uh, let's see, I've got five or so. I'm just going to queue up maybe just a couple more. I want to see what people are, are thinking. I'm seeing a lot of similar stuff in terms of uh, timing and spacing issues that we can talk about. It's typically, it's typically the same issues to get a more visually appealing animation, which is timing and spacing. It looks like people are not having trouble with squash and stretch all that much. I'm seeing a lot of dynamic kind of squash and stretch stuff. The bigger thing is just timing and spacing. And... Uh, need you. Let's go ahead and bring yours in as well. Put you in the spotlight here. And uh, I don't really, I haven't let anybody know that we were going to look at their work. This is just all, you know, inside the MM family. So no judgment. We're all learning. And for many of you, this is the first time you've been asked to uh, do an animation like this. So, you know, if there's, if there's little issues, if there's timing and spacing issues, um, that's, that shouldn't be shocking, right? That's not surprising. 
but this is how we learn. This is how we get get better. All right, I'm just going to uh, let's see. And I want to make sure I give credit where credit's due here. I was pulling from David's class. I believe we're looking at Chris. We are looking at Chris's animation. Uh, Mr. Chris Schroep, if I'm saying your name correctly, sir. And okay, so we've got a diving board animation. Looks like you did this with uh, kind of Photoshop or Adobe Animate with some 2D. And I've already got a layer going, looking at some of the, the timing and the spacing here. And let's see if I can get a smooth playback. Hopefully this plays smoothly through the stream. And then the water kind of comes up and washes him, washes him back up. So what I was doing was laying out a little bit of kind of a spacing chart. It looks like we're on twos, which is good, meaning kind of locking in an animation. Uh, so my first critique, Chris, when looking at your animation was I would have probably liked to have seen a little more exaggerated timing on the top of this dive. And we'll talk about what, uh, what I mean by that specifically. I really like the arc that you've put your character on. So we know that arcs is an animation principle. Things, uh, because of gravity and because of inertia and momentum, things, unless it's a robot, don't move in straight lines. So you've got a pretty nice arc that we're seeing. Um, so I really like to see that. But when I watch the playback, it's, uh, he's kind of up in the air. I think a slightly more playful version, too, would be back up. I think that's pretty cool. I think that's a really clever uh, little story detail. So that's cool. And then you got kind of a looping animation where he does it over and over again. My layer needs to be cut down here. So I think it's a great start, Chris. I really like the, uh, I like your artwork. I like your setting. I think you got some cool stuff going on in the sky. I think just playing with that timing a little bit, right? Maybe a little bit more hang on the top, a little bit quicker into the water. I think you could probably have a little bit more fun with that splash potentially, you know, like really, if he goes in a little quicker, maybe that splash could give us a little bit more life in the scene push that out a, a little bit more exaggerated. Um, but generally speaking, really cool start. Um, I'm glad to see these almost kind of pencil strokes you're doing in here. I wonder if you were doing this in Photoshop or in Animate, um, or if you were just doing it in After Effects with shape layers. Let's see, no questions, no questions. Uh, so super fun animation. Oops. Okay, let's see, little issue with the stream there, little hiccup. Everybody uh, seeing me, hearing me okay? Oops. That was intended with a question mark. Okay, next, I believe this is from Mr. Steve Thoreau. Hopefully I'm saying your last name correctly. Steve Thoreau, also in David's class. Steve did uh, an approach that I don't think we've seen before on this particular assignment, where it appears he's almost kind of rotoscoped a piece of footage, unless he just was animating this, um, just kind of eyeballing it with the, uh, with the texture overlay here. Let me just go ahead and hit play, Let's see if we can get that to, s to go through smoothly. Guy's got the ball, he slams it down. <laughs> the dog gets up and it's in, uh, I'm digging the texture here and the paint style, that's super cool. Okay, Anya's giving us the thumbs up. Thank you, Anya. Uh, so Steve, kudos on the style. I think what you're doing is cool here. I think, uh, I'd like to get a little bit of a spacing chart going in here. It's a little hard to follow 
the path of the ball, just watching it, kind of goes up super high. Okay, so this is a good opportunity to talk about uh, timing and spacing again. You have, uh, let's see, so you got the blur going, that's good. Oh, come on. My hotkeys aren't working in Photoshop, that's good. I think it's going to get a little lost. So let me actually do it with white. We don't need to. We don't need to do a, a spacing chart for the entire thing. I just want to show on the spacing chart how this uh, ball actually begins to slow down as it's approaching the ground. So Steve, you've kind of eased it into the ground, which uh, we know from gravity just would not happen. And your motion blur is so intense that we actually lose the visual of the ball. But you see how it's actually easing into the ground. It like stays pretty linear. And then it eases into the ground, almost like it knows it's about to hit the ground. So let's see if we go back one more. So you've actually got it going pretty good, right? It's like space pretty far, it's coming down, but then it kind of eases into the ground, just sits for a frame, no squash, no stretch, just kind of chills on the ground, and then totally takes off in this direction. I guess I better switch colors here. Let's just play this out a little bit, see where this goes. Takes a total jump to the right. Big, big spacing on that first, and then it starts to slow itself down in midair on that frame. Then it speeds back up. I guess I need to switch colors again. So this is going to get a little confusing, but I think we're going to be able to follow it. So let's see. Let's see if I can if I can follow this arc and see how we're doing. So the biggest issue, Steve, is in my view, is this goes up, super quick bounce, starts to come down actually eases into the floor, which we don't want to see, right? That spacing, we, sh we could probably lose this frame right here. So it doesn't appear to be easing into the floor. And then there's just a little bit of weirdness on this side where, like if you just look at these three frames, it goes super far. The spacing is very far, so that, that suggests a ton of speed. And then it's close on the next one, and then it's kind of back out to that same chunk of distance again, right? So just when you watch the natural playback, I think it gives you kind of a weird wonky feeling when you see it, just to see that spacing kind of play out that way. And we won't go all the way. And I'm loving the dog, by the way. That's super cool. You're going to have to uh, tell us, Steve, exactly what you did on process here, bud, in terms of if this was a video clip of your actual dog, or if you just eyeballed uh, the posing of, of the animal there, because that's super cool, and I'm digging the style. Uh, but the main thing is spacing, right? Is if you watch something and it feels weird, it's usually pretty reliable to go in with a kind of spacing chart and see, well, the gap here doesn't really match the gap here, so that's why we're getting, you know, it's fast, and then it slows down, and then it speeds up. Um, so just kind of massaging some of that out. Now, you might have been rotoscoping um, live video, right? So maybe we're getting some weirdness, but as the animator, important to kind of massage these things and fix it in post um, to, try to, get, to try to get a really good spacing and a consistent feel. But I think a really cool example, Steve, of just using a different style altogether. So I'm really excited to see um, just a pretty cool approach there with what you were doing. So if Steve comes in later, maybe we'll have to get uh, 
a little more information from him on his ball bounce. So let's see, who are we looking at here? I believe, is this Travis? This is Travis. Travis Swan. Hello, Travis. Good stuff. Digging the colors. Okay, we've got uh, some anticipation. Okay, I think it's interesting, the anticipation. Let's see. Kind of a double pump where he moves back, moves back, and then takes off kind of slowly. So again, this is an example So let's see, your anticipation is really fast. So you're really, really moving him on some pretty hardcore spacing there. And then when he takes off, let's just start from this frame. Okay, the no hotkeys is just a disaster. I think your spacing on the release is really mild, right? Like he feels like he's going super fast and then you kind of get this more linear, you went, a little, you went a little sheepish on the timing and the spacing of the actual launch, right? Because we have this big anticipation moment where he's like revving up his engine and then he's gonna jump off this side and then all of a sudden his spacing gets uh, super, just super linear and close together. Yeah, you're gonna, I'm gonna keep it on ones. I wanna see, I wanna see the exact uh, spacing on this, on this jump. So I think that's, I think it gives it a feel of feeling a bit wonky <coughs> in terms of like how intense I'm not drawing it exactly in the center, so I'm gonna butcher your arc just a little bit, but that's okay. I'm really more interested in seeing the timing pass, or the spacing, excuse me. I think because your anticipation was such a kind of rapid movement that then this timing and spacing that you're going with on the jump feels a little, feels a little conservative to me. I think you could probably exaggerate this and push this quite a bit. And let's see, he's just real slow, real, real slow. All these, the spacing on these frames, is super close together. But now we're gonna pick up speed. Now you can start to see, we're starting to get a little speed, which is good, because on the down, right, gravity's gonna start picking this guy up it's gonna build up a little inertia on the gravity. So here we see the spacing start to pull apart. So now he's going faster. But here we see the same issue again. Now you've kind of, you're easing him into the ground. You're easing the ball into the ground. Mm. And that's why it doesn't feel uh, natural. It doesn't feel like natural gravity because a ball does not slow itself down in midair and you actually started to move that arc out in a way that feels like he's kind of controlling himself and floating through the air. And then you went really conservatively of actually easing him in to the ground. So this is a, just another good example, right? Super slow. So I guess my note effectively is, you know, in this range, because I don't mind that he's, we've got some of that close spacing in here, uh, kind of the apex of the arc. But in this range, I think, you know, after the an anticipation, it could have been a little uh, more aggressive or more dynamic in this section. So I would have maybe lost some of these frames, so it feels more like he's jumping off, right? Uh, this section is not God, but good. I like it. I like that he's picking up speed. But then this section is bad. 
the ball cannot know that it's, that it's about to hit the ground, right? So you should probably have lost that frame, that frame, right? And just gone from here to here. So if we actually just watch it back naturally, I think it would feel a lot more natural if he wasn't easing into the ground. Like this drop feels great, feeling really good about that. I like, I'm okay with the top of the arc being a little slower because that's gonna give us a contrast. Uh, but I think the initial jump is too linear, too conservative. And then you're easing him into the ground, which doesn't really work. Um, so if you were to just maybe lose a couple of those frames, don't slow him down, just hit the ground more naturally right into that roll, I think you're gonna do a lot better on that, on that part of the shot. So let's see. Uh, Steve says, did you do a recent update? Mine all broke on my Mac. Are you talking about the hotkeys? I have not, uh, I don't think I've updated recently, Steve. So again, we're looking at Travis's uh, ball animation here. And my notes aren't gonna make sense on the second half of the shot. So let me actually just turn my notes off for a moment here. So we talked about a little spacing issue on the front of the shot. I think there's some good spacing and some not so good spacing on the, on the beginning of this shot. Um, the timing overall, I feel pretty good about until, now I think we could get in there and draw this spacing chart and talk about um, pushing this a little. I think this is a little linear. I can see that it slows down a little at the top, which I like, but I think you could, you know, my, my basic cheat code effectively when it comes to animation is just to think about it in terms of, of contrast, of fast to slow. So it's like if the ball had this frame, um, let's say we're starting to like get a little stretch, a little more stretch, then kind of slow, then slower, frames close together, then further apart, then further apart, and then maybe even further apart there to go off this direction. So, right, if the spacing is far apart, like it is here, and then kind of a section of having it closer together, that's when we can get fast, a little bit slow, and then back to fast again. So just that contrast um, I think another way of approaching that is the principle of exaggeration, um, which is, you, you know, when you watch old cartoons, things are super exaggerated. You know, Wile E. Coyote runs over the edge of the cliff and hangs there for an unnatural amount of time before, you know, his legs go and then he stretches to this incredible degree. Um, the idea that in animation, exaggerated things, exaggerated uh, timing, is more appealing to watch. So we come to another animation principle, which is appeal, making something that's visually appealing. Um, and I think the spacing, just by eyeballing it, I won't go through and draw over it again, is, um, is, a little, is just a little bit linear on the spacing. It's a little conservative. I think maybe a little faster in, slower at the top, and faster out would be even more appealing. And then here your timing gets uh, really, really aggressive, which I like, but it feels, it definitely feels a hell of a lot different than the rest of the animation. So let's go ahead and see if we can hit play. So we saw the issue at the front, and then whoo, the very end, he just flies off the screen. It's almost hard to even uh, keep your eye on it. So that's probably just like a stylistic question too. Uh, if you're creating a piece, if you're creating an animation, establishing for your world what the timing is. I think Travis, it feels a little, like in some areas, it feels really slow and conservative. In some areas, like at the end, it just feels super, super fast. Um, so just even that kind of watchability aspect of trying to keep, keep some consistency to your world in that regard is just another good thing to think about. Uh, but Travis, good job. Really enjoyed seeing uh, your animation here.
let's see, I don't want to get this wrong. This one belonged to, I believe I was in Steve's, I think this is Cameron's. Yeah, Cameron Fair doing the, uh, some stuff here with the planets. That's awesome. Digging it, digging it. Let's go ahead and take a look. Got the full stars in the background. Super duper cartoony. These look like some straight up 3D objects here. Okay. Uh, just by eyeballing it, I think I'm seeing some pretty good arcs. And let me just kind of eyeball it here. Seeing some squash and stretch. And again, we're getting into the same, we're getting into the same issues that we see a lot with people doing some of their first kind of animations like this. Now this is super playful and I <laughs> really like uh, I'm really digging, digging how playful this is and how kind of squashy the planets are. Uh, but even just eyeballing it, I can already see, I can already see some issues with the spacing that I think would give us a better result. Let me make my brush a little larger. So we're here, it's going to move a little because the planet's squashing. Let me try to make my brush size larger. So my, uh, my issue here, Cameron, again, is how you're easing out of this bounce, right? Like it touches this planet, then it starts to go the other direction. You're keeping the spacing pretty linear. It's basically almost easing out of this bottom pose. Slow, it's slow. Um, come on now. And then I feel it's going to pick up. Then your spacing actually starts to pick up through the center. But it's kept pretty linear overall. I think that definitely jumps off the page. There doesn't appear to be a huge contrast in timing. And uh, I know I'm probably sounding like a broken record at this point, but this is effectively the purpose of this assignment is to is to talk about this. And I won't say it eases into this planet, although on the spacing chart it'll look like that. I think it's just feeling a little linear, and I definitely think your arc uh, is feeling a little a little wonky as well. Let's see how we did on this one, on this spacing here. It's my favorite thing to do, people, draw spacing charts over people's animation. So I think because you have so much squash and stretch, it kind of uh, makes up for the fact that the spacing of your frames is pretty, pretty straightforward and linear and there's no real contrast on these bounces. It's just kind of moving at the same rate of speed between the, each planet. Uh, but because it is squashing and stretching so much, it uh, still is super playful and interesting to watch. But you see here, it almost definitely looks like it's easing out of this pose into the next planet. So again, I think, I think the solution is just to try to get a little bit more naturalistic to physics, which is, you know, after the bounce, so if the bounce is here, I'm just going to exaggerate. It's like the next frame would be a big jump, and then maybe, um, you know, maybe if you want to slow it down a little. But the important thing being that it doesn't slow down before it hits an object. And it definitely isn't moving linearly after it, it jumps off of something, right? Because we want to see, even if you want to slow it down in the middle slightly, you know, we want to see that spacing that suggests, you know, that it hit something, that it bounced, that it, uh, that it picked up some speed. And 
you know, it, it had to change direction. Let's see. Um, but you got the particle, you got the particle trail going. That's cool. I can see you're having some fun with this one. The squash and the stretch is super fun to watch. Uh, but again, it just comes down to picking where, uh, picking where the frames need to be, right? Choosing where uh, your spacing needs to be laid out. So let's see, who else can we look at here? Okay, this is Jenna. Jenna Russell, also in Steve's Monday group. Let's see. Now Jenna's got some sound effects, but I don't think uh, we're gonna get it here in Photoshop. We got uh, night and day, sun, uh, the sun kind of going over to the moon side. That's cool, I'm digging it. So let's see. What are the issues? What are the issues that are jumping out here? Very playful. Uh, very unique. I think one thing I would say, Jenna, is uh, easing into your easing into your stretch pose. Probably smooth this out a little. Kind of goes from one hundred percent. Uh, let's see, it kind of goes from 100% here to immediately going into this frame, uh, when really you could try to like ease this out. Um, you know. Maybe try to find a good midpoint to where you can ease into that pose a little better. Let's see. Kind of crosses over to the other side. And you see you did it there. That was nice. You go from this super extreme stretch pose here and it eases back to kind of 100% here. I like, I like that you did that. Ease it back in so it's not too extreme. I think the biggest spacing issue jumps out at me right here it's kind of going, and let's take a look. And if we just quickly draw our spacing chart. Oops. It basically kind of gets stuck in midair. Let's see, this is gonna be so close. We get these three poses that are effectively and then we start to pick up speed again. And it starts to cut down this direction. We do have some pretty extreme arcs but then your arc kind of gets broken a little bit. And I know you're doing a little bit of a push and a pull because you're trying to get it to interact with, with the moon shape here, which is cool, which is an ambitious kind of goal. And then I think the other thing is maybe uh, this, this kind of gap, like if you're gonna stretch stretch its shape like this, should it be laying flatter on the surface? It looks a little, uh, looks a little wonky. See, I don't, uh, I don't begrudge a hold. I think this frame is the problem. I think this frame is the issue. You might have been okay just to go from here and then skip past this one. But the problem with that frame is it's killing your arc 
right? Like, why does it immediate? Why does it shift in on that frame and then kind of kick back out to what you had going? And it may have just been an issue of trying to wrestle with the keyframes. And it doesn't look terrible when you watch it back at natural speed. I mean, you can tell it kind of gets stuck in midair on that first loop. Uh, but the timing is so quick, I think you do a pretty good job of masking it, but the more you look at it, the more you can tell there's something off about this, this part of the animation. And I think probably trying to clean up that arc, um, just, you know, it's not gonna, it's not gonna wobble in midair like that, so kind of cleaning that up. And then taking a look at the timing, it feels like it gets a little frozen in midair. And then again, it goes from this, this pose all the way into its, uh, its squash. And I wonder if maybe the solution is to kind of fix this pose and try to get something more on the line of your arc, as well as take a 50% between, you know, between full here and full stretch. Um, let's exaggerate that even more you know, between a full stretch and then just a 100% pose, trying to find, like, what is that intermediate pose? Can we ease them in slightly? Could we go, you know, could we go 50% of that much stretch pose to try to clean up a little bit of that, uh, a little bit of that extreme feeling where he's just, you know, he's his perfect pose and then without, without any real pickup in speed or anything like that, it just immediately, gets into that, uh, into that other pose. But even again, on the back end, you kind of ease him out, and that feels good, and then kind of repeat that same thing again. But I like the looping nature of it. I like how you brought it back around to, uh, to loop there, so I think that's cool. All right, how's everybody doing on the live stream? You guys still with me, guys and girls? All right, who else do we got? Okay, <laughs> Catherine Pendergast. Let me make sure I'm getting that right. Catherine Pendergast, gas, excuse me. Uh, okay, so gold star right off the bat, obviously, for going Mario, super badass. Um, you know, either you found some graphics online or you took, you took the crazy amount of time it would take to recreate some of these. I'm just gonna... <laughs> I'm just gonna go with, you found a good, uh, you found some good images online. Let me just go ahead and hit play here so everybody on the stream hopefully can see this. Okay, so the thing I'll, I'll, the thing I'll focus in on and look at is just your bouncing fireballs here that Bowser is spitting out because those actually look, those actually look pretty fucking good. That looks really nice. Like the first time I saw these bounces, I thought that bounce feels pretty good. Like I think it's cool you did it in the kind of pixelated style. <laughs> Poor Mario, we're gonna have to restart on this level here. And uh, I won't go in and draw over this one. I think I'm definitely in broken record mode about spacing. But uh, I think there's a really nice, natural, bouncy feel to these. And nope, I lied. I am going to do it. I am going to do a spacing chart. I have to do it because the spacing here is exactly what I'm talking about in terms of good. So that one pops up pretty quick. And then we get a little bit slower at the top. So this is just like textbook. Textbook bounce here. And let's see how we did on our arcs. The arcs look pretty, the arcs look pretty solid to my eye. Just watching it play through. I think you did a really fun uh, approach with, See, look at that. Doesn't slow down towards the ground, right? It doesn't slow down at all. See, this is kind of textbook spacing to get a playful bounce, right? Is, it's really the action is right here. This is the action, right? It's from here 
is from here to here. So we see large spacing fast, closer spacing slow. Then back to this faster spacing. That's the action. That is, that's the contrast that I'm talking about. And I think it, you know, if I just pull this layer down, I think that totally comes across when you watch the bounces, they have that feel. They really have that feel like they're not easing into the ground. It doesn't feel floaty. It really feels like it's contacting that surface. You can kind of feel that weight. And uh, so that's it. I mean, thank you, Catherine, for uh, giving us that uh, kind of textbook example of not letting it ease into the ground. It hits that ground, cool looking squash pose. <laughs> Even on the pixelated style, I think you did a great job of keeping it the art direction kind of in line. Up through the top, squash down. You got Bowser's mouth going open and closed, that's awesome. So yes, good job. Gold star, white star, there we go. All right, who do we got here? Cardboard house, let me see. Yes, we're following good stuff, good stuff, thank you. Uh, I wanna say last but not least is Kenza. Is it the Ninja Bounce? Nope. Just doing the cardboard box. I think it's Miju. Yes, it is. So Miju, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, your animation here. All right, so the cardboard box opens, kind of falls out. This isn't playing back at real time. Let's see if we can get it to go proper 30. And then, uh, then that's it. So then the animation just holds. That's kind of dead space there. So it's really this portion here. Let's kind of zoom in. Okay, so the box opens. So that is, uh, let me go into broken record mode here. Right. So we go here, okay, nice. We're picking up speed, we're picking up speed. See, we're a little slower, which is good, right? So like the ball is resting. So it's gonna go a little slow, but then it should immediately pick up speed, good. Ah, but then the problem comes here. Before it hits the ground, our spacing starts to close again. We've actually slowed the ball down. Again, it's almost anticipating contact. So this would be you know, an ease in, ease out kind of pattern on the spacing, except that when a ball is dropping towards the ground, it's not going to ease in to that next contact pose. Uh, so Miju, that is why I think when you just watch the playback, it just doesn't feel, it doesn't feel natural. It feels floaty, because it's like picking up speed, uh, but then it starts to slow down, and that's not what we want. Uh, the, the squash and the stretch is very subtle on the red one, which is okay. You know, maybe it's a stiffer material, so it's not gonna bounce as much. But let's see. Let's see what we did on the, on the green ball here. I like your shading, Miju. Super quick, so it goes from there to there into the squash pose. See that one? But just in the, here's the problem. Then that jump is like basically static. It almost stays in place. Then we kind of lose track of it. But you see the pink ball the pink ball is going to have the same issue, Miju. It's going to be going here. It's going to go fast on that next frame, which I think looks good. Right? We're going to see, but then before it's contacted, before anything, now you've shortened up that spacing again, which is what we don't want to do. Right? You've shortened it up pretty good. It's really starting to ease in and really starting to. Uh, almost anticipate the ground. And it seems like you've actually begun its squash and stretch before it even hit the ground. And you see, same thing there. So on this bounce, right, you've got your kind of arc. 
the spacing that you seem to have is linear, and what it really ought to be, so if this is one pose, the next pose it should kind of jump, and then if you want to close in that spacing at all, but then it should basically pick up speed again, right? So that's the action, right? It's fast off the ground, get some wider spacing to show us that it's really bouncing. If you want to kind of exaggerate it through the top of its bounce, but then it needs to pick up speed again on the way down. But what does happen is it eases out, floats through the middle, and then eases all the way in and then hits the ground. So really you just need to change uh, the timing's a little slow, too. Definitely, compared to how fast it was going, uh, the overall timing beats could probably be sped up, uh, but the spacing is the issue, right? Instead of seeing slow into fast to have some kind of contrast, it just, it just goes in a total linear motion and then eases all the way into the ground. So uh, hopefully, Miju, based on all on these other examples, if you saw some of these, um, you can see how spacing really dictates the feel and the nature of, of the movement and of the animation. So if you get something that feels floaty, if it doesn't feel right, if it doesn't look right, it's usually that the spacing um, isn't right, you know? It's uh, having things that feel floaty, that are floating towards the ground, this ball's anticipating its contact. Um, so it's just good things to get in there and tweak to try to make improvements. Um, in, in your animation. So let's see. Uh, that's, that's all the ones I was going to go through today. I think uh, everybody's pretty much getting the picture on why we're having you do this assignment in terms of uh, thinking about animation principles. I think one thing that people are doing really well is the principle of staging, which is making sure that the, the concept is clear and it's well positioned within the composition. I'm seeing a lot of really solid staging where the idea is really clear. Um, it just gets into you know, having enough experience with animation to be able to think about it in these terms, thinking about the position of your objects on this kind of frame by frame level, which is why we call the project frame by frame. Because even when you're animating in After Effects, it's still, you still need to be able to think about it in terms of well, on this frame, it really should be doing this, and on this frame, it really should be doing this. You still need to be able to think about it in a kind of frame-to-frame -frame context. Um, so if there's any questions, let's go ahead and chat now. If uh, you really want me to take a look at yours and you're hanging out, we can do that now. We've got about five minutes. Um, but overall, really excited to see everybody uh, getting into this animation project and hopefully enjoying it, hopefully having fun. Um, I know that wrestling with keyframes and the graph editor in After Effects is kind of a challenge of its own. So I'm hopeful that that is something that you've gotten a little more experience with if, if it's one of your first times doing that is on, is on this production. Um, and that you can start to get a sense of the two types of graph editor between you know uh, the velocity and the actual value graph, the speed graph versus the value graph. Um, and just how important it is to, uh, to be able to use that as a tool. So let's see. I'll go ahead and kill the screen share for a minute. Uh, okay, so any questions? Let's see, a couple of questions coming here on Slack. <sighs> Got the French press going today. Uh, I had always been skeptical of the French press, but um, I now concede it is far superior to drip coffee. So now I have to, uh, to do the French press every morning. A little more complicated, but uh, very, very worth it. Anya says, I really enjoyed the first assignment. Still a work in progress. I'm glad to hear it, Anya. Uh, yep, work in progress. That's fine. Um, we don't really envision the, the animation project necessarily as a portfolio piece. It's really more an opportunity for this type of discussion, and let's see. The discussion about arcs, the discussion about spacing, the discussion about overall timing, which is kind of the overall beats of the animation. Um, anticipation, I'm seeing a lot of people incorporate anticipation 
uh, as I said, I think the staging on each of these is pretty solid, right? Like it's super clear. Um, it really just typically comes down to kind of these fine details of, um, of where things fall on any given frame, right? And trying to work on that spacing a little bit. So let's see. Okay, not seeing uh, any questions. This is uh, coming towards the end of week three here. This semester is gonna fly by as they always do. Uh, for any questions, please reach out to me uh, on DM or to your mentor. And uh, happy animating, happy designing. We're gonna be switching gears a little bit going into week four for class one students. Uh, moving now into a first design project, so excited about um, kind of moving our discussion from animation principles into design principles and talking about some of those things. Uh, so I think the next few weeks are gonna be really interesting in that regard. And uh, as I said, any questions, please reach out. And if not, have a great week and weekend. Thanks for hanging out if you were able to today, and we'll, we'll see you next time. Bye.